Było zej. Is it gonna work? Is it going to work? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Is it gonna work? He says crossing fingers. Crossing fingers, definitely. Is it gonna work? Well, according to this, it's working. And according to this, it is working. So, hello, everyone. We'll see. We'll see. I've got about two, three, four, five, six. Hello. Hi, everyone. Is this working? Ah. Uh. Hmm. Well, it's telling me it's working. You can see me. That's good. And this system is telling me it's working. But YouTube is trying to tell me that it's not working. So let me see if it is working. It's just not working in a way that YouTube is happy with. There's always that possibility. There is always that possibility. It appears to be working. Can you all hear me? If you can hear me, then it's good. Hello, everyone. <laughs> right, I am operating in the dark because... Let me explain. I'm going to take you on a little tour. You can't see much in there because the girls are hiding. But... This is where I'm staying at the moment. And as such, I thought it'd be fun. Um, I seem to have picked the only lodge in the place without a hot tub. So, sadly enough, you're not getting hot tub historian this evening, but there is always a chance at some point you will get hot tub historian. It is my constant thing to, uh, to wind up my family as an option, a, a, a thing I might do is hot tub historian. So, how are we all? Oh, you well. Oh, good lord, that was silly. <sighs> right then, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Hello everyone. Hello Stafford. For some, we're going to take cousin's wedding and grandmother's ninety-fifth birthday, and your brother's thirty-fifth birthday. Yes, they're all far more important. And the fact that your older brother is thirty-five just makes me feel old. But thank you. Look after your older brother. He's thirty-five years young, and just tell him to have some iron brew. I, of course, am luckily joined by the amber network, net, uh, nectar of the gods. But as this is going to be over a mobile phone, this probably will not be the longest live stream I've ever done. Now, hello Wayne's World, hello Carl Vigasberg, hello Rob Smith, hello Tana Felker, hello John Shea, hello Michael Cooch, hello Mark Harkness. Um, refund for the car, well we're hoping they're supposed to give me the money back. We'll see, we will see. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Hello, Abazaski. Hello, DG40. Hello, Christopher. Hello, Yosonk. Hello, Abazaski. Hello, Jane Ruff. Hello, Tana Becker. Hello, Michael. Hello, Leslie Mitchell. Hello. Evening, for four liters of iron brew. Do, will that be enough? I have six liters on this side, at least. Well, I had six. I kind of opened this bottle a bit ago. So, you know, I have about five. Glad you can see me. Hello, Rufan. <laughs> uh, hi, Steve Richard. Hi. Oh, thank you. Glad you can hear me. Uh, can I ask what parts of the renown design were Courageous supposed to improve on? That was, I swear, a cunning ploy of Jackie Fishers to claim they were supposed to improve on them, but basically they don't. The, the, the only thing they improve, if anything, is the ability of them to claim that you know these ships can go into shallow water honestly the courageous class 
and etc. are not an improvement on the Renowns in any way, shape or form in my mind. Hello, uh, ooh, hello, Sly Cat. Hello, Swamp Angel. Uh, Swamp, Angel. Uh, Swamp Angel. I can see in here, glad. As I say, also, looks like you're lo locked in a cellar. If you need help, please make a main call on Brandon Pantagoni and need you. No. Hello. Are you coming out? Are you staying in? You're just waving. Okay. It's fun to have a sister just waving at me. Th they're always welcome. <sighs> this is the research trip I get to take company. The next one, I, I, I'm on my own. I don't mind being on my own. Both are good, but um, yeah. It's fun having company. Today I was squaring them around being the um, chauffeur, and it was, it was interesting. Hello, Colin Cameron. Ooh. So YouTube is usual pain. Well, to be honest, I'm not using XSplit. Because I'm doing this from my phone, I have different software which I run from my phone. Because I found long ago that XSplit works better from the computers, and Steam Labs works better from the phones. So I've always had Steam Labs on the phone. In fact, I pay the £5 a month thing to Steam Labs as my backup. So if ever my XSplit goes down and my computer's not working, I always have a backup of being able to do a presentation like I used to with printed out slides over the phone. Never egging a toilet paper on Devil's Night. No, no, no. It's the 30th, not the 31st. Just on. Hot topic, sorry. Not sure whether to be able to be appalled or intrigued. It's, you know, it's... it's uh, Be intrigued. This, uh, the Hot Top Historian is a great idea. It's basically me in a hot tub answering history questions. <laughs> I'm still winding people up that, that there might be some of the shorts produced for Christmas might be in, from Hot Top Historians. Take care, Stafford. Hi, Anuk. Hi, John Sykes. Hi, Cameron. Doc, I was wondering if you can recommend sources on if there were anti ra 97 anti-slave patrols in East Anger up to the Red Sea. Well, in the slave trade to Arabia was the same size as the Atlantic one. I was looking to find out if the RN covered the whole coast of Africa. Um, the RN did. It was different stations, so you will find the what was what's called the Atlantic and African state. The African sort of Atlantic station covers the the West Africa side. The Indian Ocean Squadron covers the eastern side of of Africa, and. Now, the book I've got, which has all the China station uh, commanders, etc., and all they want, uh, got up to do, well, I've heard that the author might be doing one on the Indian Ocean Station at some point. In which case, if they do, that will be an absolutely excellent one to start, because mostly what I can think of are the various accounts by various commanders of their service. The trouble is, most of those books are not really able to be got hold of. They are probably the best primary source to start off with. There is, of course, the official government accounts, but the official government accounts will not give you any of the flavour of the history. And so, with no flavour of the history, they sort of they don't they don't allow you to go down some of the interesting avenues which you could go to find more information. Um, also, there's always the colonial records. So I would start with looking up the station commanders and their various autobiographies. That'd be where I would go for it, Colin, if I was you. Uh, look at the Indian Ocean one. Wait a minute. Before I drop this to the Patreon section, would you consider doing a series, uh, a series military analysis? Um, Wayne, as I've done before in the past, if I've seen something that's interesting that comes through as a patron suggestion, it's best to do as a series. As you know, I tend to do series is when I go travelling, for example, because I'm not going to be around for a Thursday video, etc. So I do a series of shorter videos, because I, I don't like leaving you all without a Thursday video and I give you some things to sort of enjoy. So like this week, there are a load of cruiser videos coming out, and in roughly two weeks' time, there's another load of cruiser videos coming out. 
So please do drop it as a suggestion and I will comment if I think I can do it in one off or whether it's going to be a full uh, a full series. Next thing on, did I see, you see my UAD suggestion? I've seen a couple of UAD suggestions from you. I've got them filed away for when I get UAD and some time with UAD uh, on the chat on the sort of the video uh, on the sort of the new PC. Um, that's probably going to be after I finish recording quite a lot of the large chunk of the Christmas videos. In fact, my plan is to get as many of the Christmas videos written up as possible during November and recorded during November so that during Christmas I can have some time off and I can do some UAD stuff and I can do some more writing and I can do some more things like that. Joss Vong, waving back out of courtesy. Hello, Joss. There is a sis here. <laughs> ah, yes, you're commenting to my sister. Don't worry. She does that. The fact is, there is my mum is also the other side of that, and she is plotting a way to be commenting on the chat, uh, the YouTube, on the chat. So. If you see some ra a random name start heckling me, it's probably her. Late start in the darkness, this is weird. Yes, well, I'm outside. I'm under some beautiful oak trees in the dark. Now, you're very lucky, because if we'd been in number 18 rather than number 19, which we're in, which is a very auspicious that I want number to be in, number 19 is always cool, uh, 19th century, 1900s, all very good times, um, there is a hot tub in number 18. There is also a hot tub in number 20. So, you are very lucky because you would be having this presented from a hot tub. And you'll be seeing more of me than you probably wanted to because, well, luckily I do, I, I, I have a decent pair of trunks. But it would be a case of definitely from this part up will be, hello everyone, how are we all doing? I'm in a nice hot tub. <laughs> Just mainly for the hell of doing it once. <laughs> uh, if you're going to do the YouTube videos, then you're going to get accused of some of the st stuff that I get accused of by colleagues here. Might as well enjoy it. Hi, Amelia. Hi, Alistair. Hi, dear Brock. Hello, Bug Guy 8229. Hello, Marcus Francesonian. And Dan, hello. Hi, Richards. Hi, Hi, Proxons. Hi, there. God, you're about to give us some jazz poetry. <laughs> oh, you do not want to start jazz poetry. So, as always, this is questions and answers till the brew runs out. So, basically, this is entirely up to you because I don't carry that many books on my travels with me. I have got a few books on me, some good ones. Um, but mostly, this is about me answering naval history questions while I'm traveling around and making sure I say hi and, you know, just having some fun on an evening. You need some green lighting to keep a complete effect. There is the other fact that it's rather sort of auspicious for Halloween-ish. For me to be out in the pitch black, you know. Hello. Although I'm not really in the dark as much as you'd think, because there is a nice row of lights on my lodge. It's very comfortable. And look at this. I have got a lovely crisscross tumbler for my amber nectar. Admittedly, I'm fairly sure most people when they refer to that they are talking about whiskey rather than iron brew, but still. <sighs> you know, not all of us are lucky enough to be addicted to iron brew rather than whiskey. Uh. Hi, Chimby. Nice one. So, what was it about the Buccaneer that meant it beat the Armstrong with AW168 and Hawker P118 designs for the NA39 tender? Pretty much, the Buccaneer was found to be the easiest to fly. This is going to sound strange, but the person who was in charge of the program had spent a lot of time talking to people who had been part of the Swordfish development program. And he decided that if you were going to be flying low at as fast subsonic speeds as you could get away with at the time, 
and very very low with precision you needed for similar reasons as you needed for the swordfish with a long range night strike you needed to be as easy to fly and as intuitive as possible and the others were just that tad less so it's not a case of a massive difference or a massive qualitative edge or uh, overwhelming superiority it's just of the three the easiest to fly the most intuitive to fly was the buccaneer so that's the one they went with I'm sorry, Stafford. You had to drive in a mini. I, I, I am. I'm sorry, my friend. That's just that's just terrible. Sorry. A mini. <laughs> uh sorry. I, I kid. I kid. George, I'm sorry about uh, later. Had to go buy a new keyboard as the old keyboard had dropped at least three key sensors overnight. That happens, sadly enough. Nice if the Admirals had been over 40,000 tons, would you get a better ship out of the deal? Yes. And the Admirals were basically 42,000 tons, or actually more than 42,000 tons. The thing we know, the one, we don't know much about the Admirals in terms of their finalised design, really. But we do know that the three Admirals which were going to be following on from Hood would have been just as fast, if not slightly faster than the Hood, and would have been slightly heavier. So, Hood is roughly 42,000 tons in standard, so I reckon them to have been about 45,000 tons in standard. That's my estimate. Oh. Dr. Uh, Rapper, good afternoon, Dr. I'm not a patron, but would you consider doing more biographical videos? You seem to enjoy telling stories about people. I am considering it, and I am going to be working into design at the year of design technology, because I'm going to use it as a chance to look at some of the people who were doing designing and the technology. So I'm going to do a lot of sort of... There are a lot of ways to look at design technology and technology as a year, and I'm trying to make it as interactive for people to sort of find their way into it as possible. Wayne's World, talking communities, do you know that if you tried to make a 2022 laptop chip on the process used for the first commercial Intel processor, it'd be 20 meters by 30 meters? That's a bit small, but it does fit my rough maths in my head, so yeah. I haven't thought about it like that, but yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> ah, so it's an evening of in-depth Edwardian style conversation instead of the Victorian grandiose experience normal well it's certainly less orange than normal but I have got the Corgi Avengers t-shirt on and you well on Tuesday you'll be seeing a lot of the Poodle Avengers t-shirt because I was wearing that yesterday and I recorded Tuesday's literary, uh, video le yesterday morning so all those videos are loaded up and hopefully you'll enjoy it all Just Fong, she could do a hot tub of red noses cover. <laughs> what am I researching? Well, I'm down in Dorset and I'm looking at various well, I'm actually going to a few a couple of archives and doing some stuff like that, but I'm also looking at some steam engines. I'm gonna be hopefully seeing the Flying Scotsman tomorrow. I think that's what we planned for tomorrow. Uh, I have two walking diaries with me who are both telling me, reminding me what I'm supposed to be doing when I'm supposed to be doing it very efficiently and very kind of them. And they are, I think we're also, we're going to be going around some of the sea defences and some of the coastal fortifications because I've got an idea for some videos for next year, but before I do them, I need to scout them out. So I need to work out what they're, what's possible and also how much iron brew slash chocolate cake slash generally bri general bribery I need to give to Drac NFL to borrow to borrow him and his drone and get permission to take him in his drone there. John Sykes the third. Oh. 
Uh, I recently found out that Horatio Nelson's life was saved during the Battle of Cadiz by his coxman, John Sykes. Again, I have heard all sorts of stories about this, uh, this but I wouldn't be surprised. And my ancestors were from York, skipped to New Yorkshire, so I asked my brother, who is the family historian? Could he have been related? Uh, my brother found a relation who was born in 1770, but lived until 1824, so no joy. Any additional inf information from your posse? You or your posse? Uh, go and talk, if you're looking for a coxswain or anything like that at the Battle of Trafalgar, go and talk to Kate Jameson. Send her the story on Twitter. Tweet at her the story. I think, John, you do have Twitter. Tweet the story at J Kate Jameson and ask her to look into it. She will love that. She is, as I always said, an amazing historian of that era, and if anyone can track them down, it's going to be her. Jumbi, to what extent would hot tubs have improved the morale for sailors on the Arctic convoys? Interestingly enough, some of the Swedish and Norwegian vessels do seem to have had something like a hot tub running on some of their ships, and that did seem to make an effect, but those were few and far between, and those were ships which had been adapted for cold weather early on in their sort of careers. Um, plus, it's a, it's a case of it's a good way of getting rid of water. <laughs> <sighs> Raposa, Dr. Clark, what would you consider the best balance Allied and Axis ships of World War II? Uh, best balance of Allied and Axis ships? Ooh. Okay, well, capital ships, I'd probably go with the, the Italian Littorios. Um... I often think if the Japanese had built something like the Littorios, they could have churned out the, the amount of numbers, because they had a far more capable maritime industry than the Italians did, and they could have churned out enough of those that they would have been really problematic for the Americans in terms of capital ship terms numbers. But really, that's not what the Japanese needed, of course. The Japanese needed more survivable carriers, and it's one of those things, again, if you're going to lie make it worthwhile lying and this is my main problem with people who are lying in the, on the treaty system prior to World War II they are so basic at it I mean the British don't lie enough at all they, there's this thing, a thing and someone's commented about this in the comments you know the British lie about the illustrious air group by sticking uh, by sticking in deck parking and counting those numbers in their numbers of their air group, and you sit there and go, well, you could have just lied about the thickness of the armor and the weight of the armor you're carrying by saying you've spread it over a wider area or something, and um, had a slightly bigger ship and deck edge lifts as well. Which I do realise Wasp is the first vessel which really pioneers it, but actually you can find designs of carriers with deck edge lifts and ideas of deck edge lifts going back to, well, they actually go back to the um, World War One era when they're looking at the, their modifying ships. They did at one point consider a deck edge lifts or some of the ships they were converting at the time. So deck edge lifts have been around as an idea for a while. Um, but the sort of the best Allied and Axis ships balance and Allied and Axis ships. Ooh, that's that's a tough one. Um, I. You see, honestly, it's got to be the Midway. are probably the best balance carriers, but that's because the Maltas aren't built, so they don't really have competition. They are the first big wing fleet carrier, which is also armored, so it's got to be the Midways, and they're just about there in time. Submarines, I'm going for the U-Class boats. And I mean the British U-Class submarines. They are, without a doubt, my favourite submarines in World War II. And the Vs which follow on them from them and the As which follow on from them are just exceptionally good boats for their tonnage and their size. And that, frankly, that makes them really well balanced to me. I, you, I was going to ask, what was the mentality of the Napier Sabre for the... Have on Super Mosquito, but wasn't an, uh, that wasn't an able history question. That and um, yeah, and 
I'd say the mentality of it was the Mosquito was great. What happens if we put in some of the most powerful engines we've ever conceived in it and see what happens? Basically, it's a, can we put enough power onto this aircraft that it shreds itself to pieces in midair, in mid-flight? Honestly, I think the Napier, say, uh, Napier, say, uh, de Havilland Super Mosquito possibly could have broken the sound barrier a couple of times over. Um, I think we can't avoid the current topic. Uh, I was asking, I think we can't avoid the current topic. Admiral Marker of Tango Dan, something exploded in Sevastopol area. Do you also feel the ex uh, mass vibes? I'm thinking that someone really needs to look at their security. I'm also thinking that if you're going to do that, uh, that there are some serious issues going on because yeah that's just it, I, I would hate to think anyone would do that as a mass provoker I, I don't think anyone would do that as a false flag and I think that's probably Ukrainian success but I also think for the Russians the fact that they Ukrainians did that suggests that your security is absolutely terrible and if your security is that bad, where are the people who are supposed to be providing security? Because the only way they should be able to get through is if there's no one there. As I see, also imagine what the Italians could do if they had our current equipment. Um, the British would have had real trouble. But the guerra again, the Italians would have probably still won some things and got away with it. But the British would probably have not being quite so unlax in terms of security. They did manage to get... The fact they got the two capital ships they did was amazing. And was very, very high up the list of capabilities. But the thing was... To an extent, the British had an ego at that point. But then you, have, you look at it later on, you look at some of the other attacks, and they don't succeed because the British learned from that. And you'd think... There have been a number of attacks lately. You'd think the Russians would have learnt from them. By Gate of Moon. Would Atrus Vingard fit where Atrus Belfast currently is? Um, yes, but it would be a, t a tight squeeze. It would have needed some work. You'd have probably changed the mooring position. You'd have either needed to do some dredging, or you'd have needed to do some serious work on some of the some of the sort of spacing. You might even have changed the shape of the bank for her and built it specially. Kind of re hot tub. The Soviets on their typhoon boomers did have a small sauna and the last thing about the Royal, about the Red Navy that came into my mind was uh, creature comfort. So probably a a, a big morale boost. The typhoons had a lot of interesting things on them. They are very big submarines and they were also very big status units, let's be honest. That's their plan. My coach, if the G3s have been built, assuming they received a refit, like the R-Class and QEs Act, what would their refitted class look like? It depends when they get the refit, whether they get 4.5-inch guns or they get 5.25-inch guns as their twins. But um, if they decide to replace the 6-inch and the 6-inch secondaries and the 4-inch uh, AA guns, then they probably go with the 5.25s. But if they do it in the earlier 1930s, then they probably get something like a 4.5 of the 4.5, as you find on uh, some of the vessels. And that's going to be on the rear. Their aircraft will be launched over the rear, so that's where they'll be positioned. And their guns will be forward. Um, yeah, they probably look like they did. They might have got a turbine upgrade. They might have given them upgraded engines. And then the question will be whether they go for the same amount of power so they can maintain the same, roughly the same speed, or and use the tonnage for uh, putting in more armor, etc. Or whether they decide, frankly, they've got enough armor, so let's put in some more speed. And if they put in more speed, that's just going to cause a panic attack in various parts of the world. But remember, if the British get the G3s, that means the Yanks have got the Lexingtons, and the Japanese have probably got... Well, they probably haven't have got the battle cruisers rather than getting the battleships that they were building. So it'd be a case of if the British get the free G threes, and that would probably be instead of the Nelson and Rodneys, they'd be going, "You can complete your free battle cru free of your battle cruisers you're building, or you know, etc." Um, probably it'd be a case of a four four two, 
bring complete four of those uh, or three of those and probably let's say four and then America gets four Lexingtons and then Japan gets two of whatever they want Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like a fun drive down the Trans Canada Highway in a mini with the flex pipe having a hole in it. Ooch! Titanium Productions. The Saunders SR177 gets built. What does its career phonetically look like? What long lasting effect does it have on the RM button? Does it last a long time or is it lifespan short like a C Vixen? Um, let's see. Because the one thing I have to ask about the Saunders SR71 is its range. Mm. Well, it's a half rocket, half jet. How was that? 10,000 LP pounds of thrust. 10,000 pounds of thrust in 1950. That thing would have been... Basically, you would have had a competition for the F-104. I'm not sure whether it would have done any good for British defence industry, but it would be interesting. It's, uh, George Newman, hot tub historian. There's an image I'd rather not have had in my head. Well, wait till, Chris uh, wait till Christmas and the shorts that come out. As said, there might be as many as 12 shorts done by the hot tub historian. <laughs> might be. Uh, Doc, if you're going to cover engineers, how many weeks do you think you're going to just do, do be just Brunel? Honestly, as much as I love Brunel, I would probably leave that for just a week. For simple reasons that if I gave him more than that, I could be giving him what stuff for Ava. Uh, mm. I don't think the P one four eight is not P point one four eight is not viable. I just think it's very interesting at that time. Mark Harkness, my wife wants that shirt. Um, I have more than one version of the shirt because my mum got it as well. And um, if you just type in Doggy Avengers into Google, then you should find the website. I have a Poodle Avengers shirt, a Corgi Avengers shirt. As I said, my mum has another Corgi Avengers shirt because she has many poodle tops, but I couldn't find a Corgi one. And yeah, I think my sister's currently after one of these shirts as well. Nice thing to say, everyone. How do you turn a central class into a heavy lift crane ship? Um, probably cut down quite a bit of the deck and quite a lot of the structure, and maybe fit it with bulges. Before you fit a crane, just to try and balance the weight and the moving weight. And I see everyone. If the Bulk Albion Essential underwent the planned conversion intended for them, how long did it last? <sighs> Probably another decade or so. It depends again on the 1960s white paper and the East of Suez decisions. Now, in Britain, what would the, would the other three animals have a continuous flush deck from the bow to stern, more like Nelson's, than the Hood and Renowns had been finished in, uh, as battle cruisers? There is a debate as to whether they would have gone with that design or not. I think they might have still had a step design, but there are some people who make a very persuasive and very loud argument that they'd have had a flush deck. But it would be interesting to see. 
Dan Freeman, you're in West Dorset, I guess, near Weymouth, Portland? Potentially. Where's the flashing light come from? There is something keep flashing behind me. And I'm not sure what it is. Just so, sir, I have a question I want to ask. Would you consider doing a video discussing the Anglo-German naval arms race, the reasons why it happened, the context of this, and sh this ship's sake? You will, f uh, Joseph, you will find an entire series already on that. Um, the na Dreadnoughts, 1905 to 1914. The entire series is all about the naval race going on, and the fact that it wasn't just an Anglo-German naval race, the fact that there was a French one, the French involvement, there was the Italian involvement, there was the American involvement, there was the South African, uh, South Americans involvement. There was all sorts of involvements in there, but um, yes, you'll find the 1905 uh, to 1940, Reynolds 1905 to 1914 is all about that, and does discuss the different ships. So please go look that, and if you would like more done on that, then please just message me. I am considering going back to some of my earlier videos I did, especially some of the ones I did in the period before I had XSplit and before I got used to doing the PowerPoints, etc. And, you know, when I used to shop images I'd printed out, etc., and redoing them. For example, the Battle Cruisers one, I'm considering redoing as under a new sort of title of, um, you know, something. Daniel McCall, I'm jealous you're seeing the Scotsman tomorrow. I am... Um, Slightly jealous of me tomorrow as well. Uh, Rafa Razorback, Dr. Clark, Mr. Razorback wants to know if you were in a bomb shelter and if you have the fluffy research assistant and the training fluffy research assistant power, uh, powering a generator to do the live. Not in a bomb shelter. I am. Again, I you, you can't really see, but there's an oak tree up above me. There literally is. I am surrounded by trees. I'm in a forest in the middle of the countryside. It's beautiful, and they're not, they're definitely not powering a generator. They are currently inside, honestly not sitting on the couch with my mother and sister watching Strictly Come Dancing or something else. They're looking at me through a window going, why are you outside? And I thought it was just fun to do outside. Hmm. Christopher, Christopher, looking forward to the case of fortification videos. Personally, find it fascinating. It should be good when I get there. I'll join in the bribe attempt. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dan Freeman, a finished ship without a sauna would be like a British ship without a run, uh, rum and tea. Just make sure you hide the rum if ever Kira Knightley's aboard. I know it was her character. In, par uh, in parts of the Caribbean, but I'm still not quite sure if we can trust her near any rum. And I might not drink the stuff, but I do, I do know what would happen if someone burnt my iron brew. Luckily, iron brew doesn't burn. Mm. It's ever seen the old pictures of the pilots on new steam engines and cars? They're fascinating. What about all the half-buried super buildings we live on top of, of an unknown or forgotten prior age? Mm. There's all sorts of things. London's basically built on mostly London. I've answered your question, Jason Sarah, I hope. Uh, someone video photographer. Hello, coming from the railway fan world. What is weird and wonderful and mad, to be honest, about a flying Scotty is considered to be uh, considered to be a money bucket. She is, but she's still beautiful. Let's be honest, steam trains are always a money bucket, whether they're in my little end gauge railway, my O gauge railway, or the big actual steam things. Hmm. The Marcus Francione, on Second Pacific Squadron, reaching the Dutch Indies, but this time the Dutch fleet did run into the Pacific Squadron regardless outcome. How would this have influenced the Dutch naval construction? If... The Dutch fleet had run into the Second Pacific Squadron, unless there had actually been some fighting, there's probably not much difference. But if there's actually some fighting, 
then considering the time it takes them to actually get round to building anything, the Dutch might have actually built something by the time of World War One. They might have actually had a battle cruise or something in service. God, Cameron, can find a Scotsman, watch out. Given it's an International Road Museum that runs it, they may break it. They permanently broke the Green Arrow when she was covering for the Flying Scotsman one year. I'm a bit annoyed, but it was because the GA is the only surviving lurker my grandfather worked on. Um, there is... I've heard some. there is some work afoot to try and get the Green Arrow back working. It's just... it's not permanently broken, it's just very expensive. And someone has said they might they might give them money. Makuch, if you're going to <laughs> to lie, make it worthwhile lying. I qualified that with, provided that is the credible lie you think you can get away with. And claiming Yamoto as a, D a DD, for example, is a step too far. You can't get away with that, no. My favourite subs are the Ozzel class and the Duchess that they're based on. Good choices. <sighs> Take care, Constantinus. Uh, okay. My Congress, why not? The new Kaga is just a destroyer after all. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the Yamoto would get away being called a destroyer. I think he may be able to claim it's a battle cruiser. That would be potentially what I'd have claimed. It's a battle cruiser we built. It's got no barely any armor. Mm hmm That's how we can afford to have the guns and why it's the size it is. I think so not certain if I've asked before, what made the um RN reject the Blackburn B fifty four B eighty eight in favour of Gannett? I think it was airframe. I think they decided the Gannett had the more robust airframe. But again, sometimes these decisions are down to very finite, uh, very finite, very minimal differences. George Newman, in the, uh, the keyboard, uh, the loss of the right arrow was annoying, but could we live with? The loss of the N and the speech marks were a disaster. Could not work research subjects without drugs. No, you couldn't. <laughs> Andy Peter, good evening, Alex. I just became a grandfather this afternoon. I suddenly felt a lot older. Congratulations! And please give my best to the young mother, to the mother. I hope she's doing well, and I hope all this, uh, you know, hope, uh, hope all the families are doing well and looking after each other. Always a fun thing when that happens. It's always a fun thing. In my family, that's always that means an immediate visit to free uh, free stores, the confectionery, confectioners, the toy store, and for some reason, always also the clothing store. We'll leave that to one side. Oh, good lord! Mm, uh, that I don't want to imagine that. That would scare me and give me a nightmare, probably. Um, Colin Cameron, but given that we are seeing the successful deployment of drone boats, do you think we will see the return of torpedo nets to defend the harbour entrances? Well, that would be a nice, basic, and very simple solution to do so, but I imagine someone will want to come up with a more complicated way of creating a torpedo net. It will just be some sort of electrified net that's not going to be called a torpedo net, so it will be charged a huge amount of money to reinvent the wheel. Grissa, these Q&A videos are perfect listening to while working on getting caught up painting some scale models. I'm glad of that. This is one of the reasons why I do the Q&A videos. I like to listen to these sorts of videos myself. There are a few YouTubers who I watch. Um, Linus Tech Tips is one of them. And I, I watch quite a lot of the videos they do put out. Hence, of course, building my own computers. You know, that's one of the first YouTubers I ever subscribed to. And, um, yeah, I always like the question and answer sub on topics. Nice second, with no battleship hold extension, what would what do you get the K what, what do you get the KG fives? Are the lines under construction when World War Two breaks out? Yes, because the KG actually you probably don't get the KG fives because let's be honest, Chatfield's not going to be in power. So if Chatfield's not first Sea Lord, and you get the extension not taking place in nineteen thirty. 
um, so they start constructing. Well, that's far closer to uh, what do you call them to Nelson and Rodney. So you might get an improved Nelson and Rodney being built. An improved Nelrod would probably be the basis of what would be the King George V class at another point. And the Lions would be a continuation of that for, uh, that design. It's amazing what a lesser, uh, what ch uh, the um, extra five years or so earlier would have changed. I know, sounds like being named the Russian Black Sea flagship is a dubious honour, or more like a bad omen. Historically, it hasn't been always the best thing for them. Uh, Not a wolf, really hot top historian, a comfy historian plus better presentation. <laughs> Wayne's what? Is Dan Hart here when the £65 aim of all fluffy research assistants is teething? When fluffy research assistants are tearing, one does, uh, teething, one does not listen to anything other than them teething. I think I've answered the question, haven't I, for Joseph Sarah? There is a reason why I'm built. I'm not sure how far I am behind on the chat. Um, manage to toggle the timestamps. Uh, 7.24, and I, so I'm about a quarter of an hour behind on the chat. I do apologise. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone's been on, someone's been on here for ten months. I'll get, I'll find that out soon. I join doctrine of launching a part of the air group from each carrier to make up an airstrike. Did this cause issues at Midway? Uh, not really, but it does, it, it's to, so you can make an aggregate larger force overall, but it, in the terms of the strike, which is sensible, and you do need multi-carrier operations in order to achieve that, but there are definite difficulties in, and time lags in forming all these aircraft up, but there again, you're also launching multiple, the aircraft from multiple flight decks, so you, there's also that benefit. So it's a half a dozen one, six the other. It's more complicated to do, but if you practice it and you have experienced crew, you can do it well. The trouble is for the Japanese is after Midway and after Coral Sea, they don't have those experienced crew and then they have trouble. So it's a case of, it's something you can do fairly easily when you have experienced crew. And when you have a system which is going to retain your institutional memory as best you can in wartime, when you have a system which expends, actively expends your institutional memory, you are kind of, well, how do I put this politely? You're a helial axle around a central point. Well, a double helial axis, I think. If the British Empire quits the gold standard earlier and fared better in the 30s, how does that affect rearmament? They have more money, so they probably rearm more quickly. That's it. If they have more money, they probably rearm more quickly. Basically, the, the, proportionally, the Treasury will be prepared to allow, give them, won't give them any more money, but um, they might well give them slightly, how do I put this, slight, they will still get more funding overall. Slight cat, you class summary is your favourite. Do you have a good story about them you want to share with us? Uh, I have done a few videos on the U class for this reason. My favourite story about them is their first deployment of what would go on to become the Special Boat Service. And they literally they go in, they get a drop them off, they go the the two SBS men go and blow up a tunnel. Come back out. They actually sink a submarine, uh, sink a cruiser on the way out, and the whole thing is done in the backyard of Italy. And it's one of the things the U-class just sitting, operating on a Malta and tent flotilla just do so much fun stuff, uh, so much random stuff. 
it's really quite an amazing class all they got up to and that's that's one of the reasons why I did that whole that video that whole video on Malta and all the submarines at Malta was because of the U class and they're one of the things I want to do a book about it's sort of doing a book on the flower class corvettes and new class submarines is a real fun thing for me enjoy the walk Wayne um but go to me. how did US Civil War era frigates compare to the Can Um they were okay. Uh they weren't terribly bad, but they were okay. They weren't they the, the basically they were more con concentrating on volume at that point than capability. So let's look this way. I, I wouldn't have liked to have fought HMS Warrior if I was any of the um, uh, any of the um US Navy's Civil War era frigates, but um Everyone else, they'd have had a chance. Dealing with Cody eighty five. I think you have been a member for ten months, so thank you. Shumak, I'm building up an Asia Cell Navy into eighteen oh six. So my plan is to get a quality advantage in frigates with a couple of rosés, and then focusing on building up a fleet of twenty four pounder frigates. Do you think this is the right approach? It'll certainly give you some strength, but I would also say maybe churn out some third rates as well whenever you get the chance. Just keep adding third rates into the mix. Mark Harkness, if instead of the Hawkins are the base of the future crew, the RM pushes to get at least some true large cruisers with up to 10 inch guns, does Germany even bother with the Panzer Chief? Ooh. They probably do, but the Panzer Chief probably look far closer to the Sharnos. Or rather, let's put it this way: they will still, they will probably go for a nine eleven inch guns, because there is no way you can say that six eleven inch guns are going to match in against anything which has eight ten inch guns. It's just not going to happen. And I doubt the British would have ten inch guns because, as I said before, their ten inch is just a terrible, terrible point. It's at the point where it's heavy enough to require a full battleship mock up to actually work, but it doesn't deliver enough power to justify that for that weight. Which is why you go over 9.2, 9.4 inch. It gives you a qualitatively enough firepower over an 8 inch. While still being able to keep the cru the upper level of cruiser level support. And cr and the lower, uh, sort of the cruiser rate of fire of the 8 inch. Whereas the 10 inch is the rate of fire of a battleship. Without the firepower of a 12 inch gun. And that's part of the problems with the 11 inch as well in that role. But, you know. Germans love their 11 inch. Don't worry, Joseph Sarah, I think I got it. I'm just 15 minutes behind on the questions because I'm catching up. So a lot of the questions you've asked were a 17... I'm 20 minutes behind. I'm 20 minutes, I apologise. <laughs> Most profusely, I'm 20 minutes behind on the questions. Oh. As a, I know, did anyone else see Drax Collab on Azor Lane ships yesterday? No. Although I am starting to think I'm going to have to start doing some more colla some collaborations and actually start out. Now I've got the PC, I'm actually confident enough to do it. So I'm, I'm going to be looking into doing some collaborations next year. Because a few people I'd like to do collaborations with. I'm not sure if they want to do collaborations with me. But I find them cool. Then anyway, cool. Um, yeah, most of my collection came from eBay, and I've spent maybe eight hundred US dollars for eight locomotives and a wide variety of rolling stock. Yeah, I tend to get most of my N-gauge locomotives from either eBay or from various. Um, how do I put this? Some very nice set of stores which specialize in having second-hand engines, and they do them in a in a nice way. If burn engineers are seeking revenge, by the time they've actually engineered anything, I will no longer be in the place where they've engineered for the revenge to take place. Chris Master Trainer, because I anticipate victory against Russia and a consequence of fast chaos, I'm starting an OSINT newspaper letter focusing on general military diplomatic issues. It's open source. It's open source, open access, free, because... Cool. 
Plenty of Russia will be winding up opposing their own government, yet lack the means. Sounds like a nice thing to do. Don't worry, Jesse, sir, I have seen all the... Ah. Nice segment. If the Irons still had central Albion and Bulwark in 1982, Focus Water, how'd they be used? Um, well, if they've done the full helicopter conversion, they're probably the LA, uh, they're probably LPHs, but they're also probably getting loaded up with Harriers. And if you have those around, you might have a lot more Harriers around. So you might have had a lot more Sea Harriers and Starters for the Royal Navy. You might be buying far more Invincible class. And the Invincible class might have been modified in that the Invincible class might have a flex deck below their hangar to allow them to take Marines, etc., so they can do the amphibious uh, LPH roll as well. So they might be actually slightly bigger, slightly longer, and have the flex deck, which could also be used as a backup hangar space, store space, that sort of thing. So it would be quite useful. Um... It'd be interesting. Some video for what advice from uni would you choose to study history? Um, make sure I'm going to a program which is a broad program. Honestly, I was very lucky. My first, my bachelor's took place at St. Mary's in Twickenham, which is a lovely little university. And they, a small department, but had an incredibly broad um, module list. One of the subject modules I did was 1960s music and culture, etc. And yes, I'm a military historian, and yes, I focused in on that because I quickly found that was the area I liked the most. But I also did politics, I did music, all those things, and I got to be able to find and look at the various points. Hello, fluffy research assistant. Hello, I can hear you. And it was fun. And I got to order a lot of other things as well. As for sure, my book budget was £220 this month. I got free books for that. Textbooks are a pain. <laughs> you got free books for £220. Yeah. Uh, there have been months where I've got one book for £400, so please. <laughs> You've got a way to go. It's a good start, though. It's a good start. It gets more painful as you get older. My short candidates are the RIP Olsel and the Great Spain from Talented G uh, Great Britain. Cool. Yickers. Hello, Yickers. Yes, I have got a brother, Iron Brew. I mean, about Battle Cruisers, a good idea or a flawed failure? As a name for the redone Battle Cruiser videos. I was considering Battle Cruisers, Battle Cruisers, or Fast Destroyers. I.e., Battle Cruiser, the two word one, which is what they originally were, Battle Cruisers. As in one word, or fast, uh, fast battleships. As the video, but, uh, yeah. Good sir, really I didn't know that though. The arms race r happened in 1898 and continued until 1914. Maybe it's because this time it takes to build ships, so that makes sense. Thanks very much, it's a pleasure. And yeah, the, the arms race does start off in, actually, broadly speaking, the arms race starts off in 1890. Um, it's been going since about 1880 unofficially. It starts to kick into gear in 1890 and it gets on from there. And I've done videos about that as well. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to do another video. If you feel, if you think those videos are not enough and do not cover enough, then please. Awesome. Uh, please just tell me and I will happily schedule in some more on that subject. It's one I've taught a lot over the years. And I can thread it into... I can definitely thread it into design and technology. A case study of design and technology. The Anglo-German naval race. Or rather, the the, the um, 1890s to 1920s naval race. Is that him? Ask Kate Jameson as she did the Grandparents War episode with Keira Knightley. She didn't mention what happened to any rum. I'll say sure, London is built on London and swamp. Yep. So is Washington. Washington's built on swamp as well. Lots of major cities are built on swamp. It's really does tell you a lot about it. Basically, most cities are built in places which are where the land was cheap a long time ago.
And Jim Beam, a re battle cruise, possibly similar to the tank argument today. Are they flawed or is it how they're used? Well, the Battle of the Falkland Islands is a good example of how a battle cruiser should be used. The Battle of Coronel Sea is a good example of how you shouldn't use cruisers. The Battle of Jutland is how you shouldn't use battle cruisers, but the Battle of Dogger Bank has some at some of their finest. Then of course, just look at the Union Pacific for uh, 414. Just to get it back to scene, it's around two and a half million dollars. They may be money pits, but historic value is worth it. Yep. Myself, there are a couple of castles I would seriously like. If I had a lot of money, if I won the lottery or something like that, um, there are a couple of castles which I would literally take over the ruins of and go, I'll take over these ruins as long as you don't mind the fact I will rebuild the entirety of the castle. I will be. Ooh, thank you. Someone's give me a super chat. When I catch up to it, I will say thank you. Then there's Rossi. I saw a travel backpack that's a special corgi carrier, so you can take the corgi and ride a motorcycle at the same time. I have one of those that allows me to go running and rock climbing and all sorts of things with a corgi on my back. I have done it. The corgi loves it. The corgi loves rock climbing, especially. He um, likes to peer over my shoulder. But he prefer the running's more something he's more he, he does more often. Because I am trying to work on getting the tum tum to go the COVID tum tum to go. Marcus Ferrer, have you seen the movie Admiral? No. Well, I've seen bits of it which have been dubbed in English, but I haven't seen the full part of all of it, so no. Uh, so I would say no. Um. Represent Merlin or Double Wasp? Which was better? I'm British. Don't ask me that question. It's cruelty. Because if I'm honest, I have to say one. But if I like my limbs attached to me and I am surrounded by British people, I have to say the other. The Merlin sounds better. The Double Wasp, probably better power to weight ratio. Magic Area 31. If Hermes was not sunk, would she have been relieved by a Colossus CVL after 1942? Um, she's probably been relieved by something after 1942. She'd probably have still been doing certain jobs. She was quite useful. She'd have probably continued her on her war doing the role of an escort carrier, basically. Um, rapper is it? Did Blackburn ever build a good looking aircraft? The Buccaneer. And the Firebrand. And Archie, what about drone missile frigates? Mm. Eh. What about drone missile frigates? Well, to an extent, we've already sort of got those. It'll be interesting to see how drones develop. I'm um, basically. I see it very much as a future of coming of these ships becoming task groups on in and of themselves, each drone being its own task group, to an extent. That reminds me, I've got an episode of Bilge Pumps to upload, and another one, uh, another couple of episodes, uh, sort of another episode to download, and then upload, and then yes, yeah, so I've got a couple of episodes to sort of just come through to me. Cody 85, you remember for 10 minutes. What's your favourite small navy that no longer exists? Oh, small navy that no longer exists. Well, you see, the trouble is, at a certain point, Poland, when it was one of the largest empires in Europe and one of the largest countries in Europe, has a very good navy. And then Poland, as it is, gets swallowed up. And then Poland has come back today. So... Basically, I would say the Aegis Sail Polish Navy is one of my favourite small navies that no longer exists. Nice, sir. You missed the third question in the No BB uh, Holly and Eccentric question. What would the World War One ship modernisation plan be? Mm. 
Honestly, if you don't have a battleship building holiday, then you might well not be modernizing the ships, the World War One ships. You might well be replacing them. That's probably what we'd be doing. I'm on live chat. No, uh, uh, Wayne. Clark, in reference to Con Cameron's question about small boats, what about modern ships, de ships designed to deal with multiple small boats? Um, that's your close-in weapon system, you hope. That is your close-in weapon system, you hope. Mm-hmm. And why you carry 30 millimeter cannon and those sort of things. Grisha, would the Venetian Navy count as a small navy no longer, no longer exist? Potentially. Probably, yes. There's ask, why electrified torpedo net? Just build the same system they use in Venice to stop the float floating entrance of the harbour. Well, a barrier when ships need to go out and refloat it back up. Hmm. Hi, Frank Eh, it's an idea. Marcus van Sonium, cipher question. You did a minor naval power. In charge of access and allied naval powers, what World War Two nation minor and major major would you put in, uh, in ans uh, uh, put asking to the powers of Star Trek DS Nine? Oh, good lord! People often come up with this sort of question. I sit there and go, um, it's quite difficult because some of them have procurement plans which would fit with one navy, and combat styles which fit with another. For example, you have to admit the Klingon one. You know, their co their procurement is the biggest and most powerful of every si they can build at every single moment, which is pretty much um, probably American. You know, and the biggest, most powerful system they can build. But then their combat style is pure Japanese honor and charge, but also stealth and deception going on. Yeah, it's a it's a mixture. It would have to be an entire video to discuss and explain the things because. I have seen various points where um, leading causes of people who are stopping patrons and write the exit survey, uh, the, va the largest cause is people having change of financial circumstances, which is um, was a nice thing for them to say, because it means I don't sit there questioning myself that much. But I do worry about them, and I'm always tempted to write an email, but then I have to go, ooh, that might be a bit rude to go in and sort of go, hope you're okay and good luck, because does that sound like I'm self-serving me by basically saying something nice, and then if they get money, do they then feel guilty about uh, them not being a patron of mine anymore? It's just, I, I end up not doing anything. But, um, no, there are some people who sort of write, you know, oh, you say things like, oh, they should have blown up a planet, and... I think that was to do with the Magog invasion, as I understood it, during, um, oh, what's it called, uh, Glorious Heritage Class Cruiser sort of series. And my point is, in nicest way, if Magog are invading my planet and my planet's lost to Magog, it's not, how do I put it, it, it it's not a nice thing. I mean, you should, I don't, they never really thought I had to say blowing up planets is a bad thing, that you don't really want to do it. But apparently I needed to say it for a couple of people. They were upset with me that I didn't. Um, I just thought that was a given. But yeah, in the nicest way, I would, rather than letting a planet fall to Magog, I would have blown it up. Why? Because, frankly, I don't want to, why should I, I don't want to put the civilians through that. They would be literally killed by being the hatching agents for Magog. So basically, they they immobilize them, lay their eggs inside them, and the eggs hatch out from them. That's just a nasty way to go, and that also gives the Magog thousands of well millions upon billions more Magog. Those are both the things I don't need when I've got more plants to defend. It's not a nice thing to do, but you need to do it. Um, but you know, so. Yeah, I am. I have to be. I think I have to be slightly more careful of sci-fi questions. In that, obviously, I need to. St there are things which I just don't think are things you need to state because I'd say they're self-evident. These truths are held to be self-evident, sort of thing. But um, yeah, as you mentioned, extra iron brew arrived from Bar. We can always hope. In this case, my iron brew today arrived from Asda. If the UK had 
developed the North Sea oil and gas during the interwar period. Do you think the British could have le would have left the treaty system so they could change the fleet to defend them? Mm, they would certainly have been tempted to. And that would mean that they'd have had to def do something to defend them. You'd have probably seen some massive forts built in the North Sea. I mean, you would have built some things in there with 15-inch guns. And it would be in a case of, we're building this whether you like it or not. You'd also probably seen some sort of military treaty alliance with Norway, etc. Because they, they would have been the other side of it. And then you think about all the technologies which would have had to be developed for that to be done. So the British submarine technology, etc. would all be exceptionally good. Vision. I think the best time to have a 10-inch British loading guns, uh, guns as main arm was the 1880s. Bigger guns had issues of firing rate and being manufactured in quality and quantity. Yep. Mark Agnes, I know the iron would go for 9.2 inch, but they'll see the limit, set the limit at 10 inch just to watch the USN make the mistake. Oh, they would. <laughs> oh, good lord, that would torch the USN and the, U uh, and the IJ, and they'd both be competing for a 10 inch work gun which worked. And British would be sitting there going, yeah, we've got 12 9.2 inch guns that work for your 8 10 inch guns that make you cry. Vision, still working for your Stargate videos, but the Battle Cruiser design says to me, space control ship, like the sea control ship concept. Hmm. Definitely has some there. Night Heron Productions. Follow on from the album and Bulwark in the Falklands. The question. If you have more Invincibles in service and being built during the Falklands, can that class potentially become an export success? Potentially. There is always the chance that if you have enough being built, you have it cheap enough that Australia, etc. might buy some. I have often said that I thought Australia, Canada, etc. could have been good markets for those ships, and India. And it could have been a case of, we'll sell you the latest and greatest, to an extent, with India probably selling them a adapted version. Um, India certainly buys the Sea Harrier after they see it, it's so successful. Andy, I was in Wickham Hans near where I live yesterday and landed in the Chesapeake. I uh, landed up in Chesapeake Mill and discovered it was made out of the captured famed American frigate Chesapeake. Ah, oh, cool. There's obviously, I recommend Perun uh, for a collab video. You can talk about the ship acquisition process. Well, I'd be very happy. It's a case of, I, need, I know I need to start doing it and I want to start doing it and now it's it's Look, I don't want to be rude about this poor laptop, the, la the laptop I have. It's a wonderful laptop. I'm still using it for all my work. But the trouble is, it was trying to do so much. The poor laptop was basically going, ah. So it's nice to now have a computer which is basically set up as my dedicated thing for doing stuff, for doing recording videos, etc., and all those things. And I can use this computer for doing the actual writing work and actually writing PowerPoints as well sometimes. Azowski, guess I need to start looking at some models, uh, trains, models myself. My two-year-old son just discovered Thomas the Tank Engine and friends. Good luck. Um, may your bank, uh, may your wallet always have just enough cash in it because it will never have any more. And be very careful about model railway shows because they sound like they're going to be fun, but take a lot of cash with you because it's going to mostly be in cash. Because I'm fairly sure most of the people are not declaring their income properly. No, they probably are. Well, to be fair, mo uh, let's put it this way. It's probably, uh, how do I put it? It's not that they're not declaring their income properly into the tax man. So let me clarify that one. They're not declaring their income properly to their significant others. Whether they are male or female, I am fairly certain they come... They sell things for cash, then they buy things in cash, and they do not tell their significant other just how much they spent versus how much they had as income. So it's not a case about denying income to the Treasury. They probably are very honest when it comes to the Treasury. In fact, most people I know who do those sort of things are incredibly honest on that front. 
It's about um, being a plausible deniability with their significant partner. And oh, they need plausible deniability where their significant partner is involved. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hello, Jacqueline. Hello, I'm 12 years old, and what is your advice for starting a naval history channel? Um, do it. That's basically it. Do it. I, I love naval history channels, and I love people starting them, and if you want to start one, then start it. Just pick some topics you like and start doing videos about it. And please, message people like me and Drac and Jamie Cedar from Armored Carriers, because... We would love. We will love to shout about your channel. We will love to talk about it. Um, I'm very happy whenever new people sort of message me and go, "We love, we just started this channel." I go and look them up. I have a, a look through their videos. Where I can, I'd like to sort of send messages quietly to the side, going giving some pointers. Or usually, Drac sends the pointers because he knows more about the stuff than I do. I'm still learning, but uh, do it. It's fun. It's fun. There's a great community. And also, please note, there are going to be people who tell, keep trying to tell you how to do the channel and the videos. And there is an extent time to listen, sometimes to listen, sometimes to ignore. It's like, I consciously try and avoid making my channel look like Drax or look like Jamie's. I consciously go, right then, they do the full screen thing. I don't like to do that because, A, it's not my training and my background. And B, I don't want to look like their channels because I will never do their channels as well as they will. I play to my strengths. However, I am now... The new computer's better at this than this PC is better. Able to make the diagrams larger and then go back. And that is something I'm going to, con I'm going to try and do. Because I do realise some people, like I'm doing now, are watching these videos on their phones rather than their computers. So what is a big image for me on my computer or someone's TV is a teeny image in a portion of their computer, their phone screen. So I will sort of make it go bigger at certain points and then come back so that they can sort of look at it when I'm on, and they can pause and have a look at it thoroughly if they want to. But um, yeah, there are, there are things you learn as you're going on and things you learn and things you adapt to, but make sure you stick it true to make it true to you. Do it your, your way. And have fun. That's the most important thing. Have fun. And that's a great point. From what I've read about the Anson subclass, I was going to make the hood design and remove the above water tube, torpedo tubes and make a few minor changes to turret shape design. Um, there are a bit more probably than that going on. Uh, Jimby, yes, I tend to fall into the camp for both tanks and battle cruisers. It's more about how they're used. True. <laughs> Rivon, I finally got into summer 22 and built from after starting in July. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, George and you. I spent 40, 140 US dollars for a used math textbook once in university. When I grabbed out the price, one of my buddies who was an E. Uh, Electronic engineer said he usually spent like 200 to 400 US dollars per ma book in major. Yep. The most I've ever spent on a single book was 700 pounds. And that was for, uh, really annoyingly, that was for a copy of a book I needed for my PhD. And literally six months later, without having advertised they were going to do it, the publishers released a new version of it, which was priced at £70 a copy. And I was just <laughs> absolutely... I actually ended up getting that version as well, though, because I wanted a version which I could actually use and abuse, rather than the £700 one, which I have to be very careful about. And I still have it. But it's, uh, it's stored safely. It's like there is a list of books which are in the uh, in the office, and there are a list of books which go out to the office and which then go back into the house. <laughs> oh. Right, 
Rolfsmith, most closely wound systems just don't have enough mounts. Two or four really just don't cover the whole of an even missile ship, never mind an aircraft carrier. No, you need more. A nice one. Could they have replaced all five R's, five Queen Elizabeths, two Renown, and one Hood in eight years? As I think eight years is not enough time, and I would argue for modernization of Battlecruise at least. I think you would find Hood and probably the Battlecruisers would get modernized. But if you think about how quickly the British could build ships if they wanted to, they could be building four ships at a time, roughly two years for them. They could have replaced all 16 ships in that time. Think about that. They could have done that. And you must remember, you had years of peace. You're starting in 1930. War doesn't break out to 1939. Plus, there's the fact that if the British are building battleships and the British are building capital ships, then the grade required for the German battleships is just going to keep going up and up and up. If the British have a fleet of 16-inch gun battleships, then the Germans going, right, and we're building something which has eight 15-inch guns, and you turn around and go, um, all the British battleships have nine 16-inch guns. Then Hitler will be going, Ugh. and it's also going to have an impact on Mussolini and Littorios. It's going to have an impact on everyone. Admiral Beatty, how do I see? Thought we were in for Olsen Wells inspired version of brew ships, the dark and foreboding background being a trademark of sorts. Well, for that, I need to do sort of this. Mm -hmm. sort of, something like this. Hello. Welcome to Brew Ships the Special. <laughs> Bit too much fun. Right. George Newman, Gene Bron Ron 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 on a drama. Yeah. Hi, Jack Ryan. Ah, Mark Sorrenton. Did the Hanseatic League have a navy? And were they, uh, their embarrassing incidents with the English? The Hanseatic League, League didn't really have a navy so much as they all had some warships themselves, all the members, and they'd sometimes get together for a joint operation. But it was kind of like the Dutch, but with a lot less organisation and a lot less um, practical work. Rosneth, alternative, make sure you take cash for only exactly what you want. If you go to a model railway show, you will never know exactly what you're going to want in advance. So just take cash and just be prepared to spend all that cash. Stromach, it's like that one for Warhammer 40k meme that my greatest fear is that I will die and my wife will set all my models for what I told her that I paid, her, I paid for them. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably going to happen. Yeah, great. I need to oversee my uh, need an overseer of my expenditures, aka wife. Uh, of course, some of us may not <laughs> may not like the drawing up of help from me. <laughs> oh, seriously, it would be terrible. But yeah, it's it's one of those things. You always need an overseer of your expenditures. Let's be honest. And to be fair, it usually goes back the other way as well. Usually, but uh, this is the thing: in any relationship, both of you probably have something which you will overspend on quite happily, and it's the other person whose job it is to sort of go, "Sure, are you quite sure?" Colin Cameron, Doc, if the Invincible and the Harrier are both export successes for multiple countries, do you think the P one one five four could have been restarted in Invincible compatible form? Potentially, if there's enough of them go selling, you know, then it becomes a development look, and you possibly see that instead of the Sea Harrier 2, or rather the later the Harrier models, instead of the GR7s and 9s, etc. Um, Jack and Buck, do you know the Fighting Ships World War 2 series? Yes, I have. I do know them. I have a few of them. Ah, Abzaski, the main problem is that the, in the Age of Sail, Poland never had a king that understood naval medals, and our main port of Gdansk was actually a quasi-independent fiefdom. At some point, we even had a Polish Gdansk war over some economic restrictions, and one time, we actually had Royal, had the Royal Navy Committee, the Parliament, refused to found, uh, found it. It was still good. George Newman, is it getting windy there, Doxy? It is a little bit windy. As said, we'll probably stop about 9 o'clock this evening. 
from a point of view of me dealing with the the cost of all these things, because I think it's working on the Wi-Fi. I think he says, but it may or may not be working on the Wi-Fi. It might be entirely going over my data allowance, which is luckily unlimited. But you know, there's always a problem with going over your data allowance. Oof. Oof. He says. What's the... Why? Because it's got a question mark next to its Wi-Fi symbol at the moment, so I'm presuming the Wi-Fi is being a bit funny. Just long. Would start a channel, but one and being a layman is a great place to start. Ninety percent of the time is knowing where you don't know. Sorry, excuse me. The assistant for research assistant seems to be having a bit of a temper tantrum. Hey, what's up? Hello. Sorry. He was after my mare's stick. Oh. Oh. Oh, good lord. He made the video, the video disappear. Why are you being grumpy? Why are you being grumpy? So. My turn, if Chile beat the Eagle of the British in 1926, what about the free tonnage for? And could Chile support the carrier? Well, that's the interesting question. What the British used the free tonnage for is probably another Ark Royal. Because if you consider the tonnage which Eagle does actually take up, the British could have probably eked out a second Ark Royal. Which would be an interesting thing to have in World War II. Andy, Peter, Andy, as a model maker, it's very tough to explain the cost to the missus. Cash is always the way. Keep it secret. Uh, keep it. Uh, uh, keep it. Oh, I'm not talking about deceiving. I don't lie well. I mean, the moment I had a wife, <laughs> the people I helped with donations would find it a little more difficult. My hands would be slapped a lot. <laughs> oh, don't worry. They all are. Hey. No, no. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. You don't like your mummy's walking stick. It's a nasty thing. It's, it, it's scary, and when it's on the table, it's scary. <sighs> Vision, we need you to watch The Expanse so we can get your analysis of the services ship designs, combat tactics, fleet organized. It does require quite a lot to watch it. It's kind of like Game of Thrones. Actually, watching a lot of it. What's your most in a nuclear strike on the Chinese? Oh, there are so many. Basically, I hate anyone which just leaves logic to a different world realm. And there are a few which do leave logic to a different realm. 700 pounds for what happened? That makes my heart hurt. The most I paid was 400 dollars, but it was a custom large print version. Eh. Sometimes they're worthwhile. This one has a lot of diagrams in. And I have noticed, I, I swear the diagrams are actually better in the original uh, than in, they are in the new version. I think they did something fun with the scaling for the new version. Rob Smith, I didn't say you would actually buy Wolf's <laughs> announcer, am I? Yeah, that's true. Uh, Jack Ray, my father's birthday today is so those two books you mentioned. Command the Ocean Bridge by Wall. Oh, cool. I hope he likes them.
Vision. In Ander, the Andor, the word naval was used in dialogue in reference to equipment of the Imperial Navy that was stolen by the Rebels. The first I'd heard that in dialogue instead of reference books. Cool. Marcus Strathairn, books are worth what the person thinks the information is worth. True. Uh, nice segment. So why did the British think the US Navy was going to replace the P-3 Orion ASW aircraft by 1970? Probably because they, the US Navy had told them they were. British were heading for jets as well. Uh, Wayne, my what fluffy research system wants another walk. Really? I'm not surprised. They like walks. Mm -hmm. But go to me. With no Washington London treaties, would that have prevented the Toronto raid and uh, Pearl Harbor attack since uh, carrier aviation would be hurt? Um, no. In fact, I think you'd probably had carrier aviation develop much as it did do anyway and I wouldn't be surprised if you'd because aircraft would have still developed and they would have been still experimenting with those things I just think you probably have had which look like midway and Malta's by 19 and by mid to late 19 the British slightly armoured and they were Building something which will have armor for survivability, because that's the British instinct. Those ships are still what the British and Americans and Japanese would be building. They're just they'd be building them free of the limitations of the treaties. Hmm. Uh, what is the type of problem name for the type of bow on the County Class Cruisers? The one with the strange overhang before it comes up to the deck level. Hmm. Stream is pausing in patches. Is it working properly now? Never mind. Uh, it buffered because it moved on to the um, joyous thing that is the uh, the Wi-Fi from my phone's 5G. If it's better on my phone's 5G, then say and we'll go back to the 5G. Um, turn to me. Oh. I do know what you're talking about, Tanner Velker, in terms of the proper bow name, but I'm, I'm trying to remember what it is It's of my head. I think I'll have to check my book, because I want to call it something, and I think the thing I'm trying to call is wrong. Yes, Zebedee is back. The fluffy researcher is yelling the wife I want to. Not so much. More a case of wanting to be accurate and knowing it and just enough to mess it up. Eh, you can get go there. You'd get there. Don't worry. <laughs> oh. Now, Dan Freeman, that's actually an interesting question. What would be a assistant that a sister ship to Ark Royal be called? There is, are various points of view on that. Uh, some would go, well, it would have been illustrious, because that's the next carrier after Ark Royal, but I doubt it would have been illustrious. My strong suspicion is that they would go for another A, so they would probably go for Argincourt. I have that feeling. So it'd be Ark Royal and Argincourt. Drop down in Circle of Doom. On and off. Ah, so it keeps buffering. Okay, right then. Let's go... It's working mostly for my Wi-Fi. But let's see. Ugh. Ooh, hello. Do you mind if I turn the Wi-Fi off on the, flat, on the phone? Hello. Is that better? Because that's two bars of 5G, so apparently that's better. Oh. There you go. Rosset. 
You're not the only person who's been caught by publishers dropping a new edition of a book that's been massively cheaper than the one that they just bought. Yeah. Altusky, I do have an official model list that I have, online sheet shared with my wife. As the, uh, and if in case you feel the need to buy me a model, here's what I have in my catalog numbers. <laughs> That's very brave. Altusky, makes life easier, but prices are easy to check. Right now I'm negotiating purchases of the 7 Provincial 1 to 100 scale with an aftermarket condition that's like printed sales. Oh my. <laughs> that will be expensive. That will be very expensive. Wait as well, you have better carrier planes too. More carriers means more experience of the way what works on the airplanes. Yeah. Michael Cash, be, um, getting consistent buffering. No matter what now. We'll watch the recording later. Take care, Doc. Good night, all. Take care, my coach. I'm back on the 5G, so hopefully that's better. Ah. Oh. Thank you, Jack Ray. You gifted someone a membership. Uh, Modern Northwolf, what is the oldest aircraft you can think of in service in any Navy? Or what was it at one time a naval aircraft? Um, good lord, that's still in service? Or still flying? Still flying is, um, well, there are swordfish, etc., and various other things still flying. Um, still in service? I think some navies have some Western Wessex still in service, and I, well, that's fairly old. I came back in time to catch the taffer in the dark. It's always good to catch the taffer in the dark. Or the, rather, the Afra in the dark, because he's the assistant fluffy research assistant now. Yeah. He's come out with me as said because, um. You were being rambunctious, weren't you? The thing is, you like everything to be done your way, and you are. Uh, unfortunately, you are the youngest. So you get your way quite often, but you can't get your way constantly. I don't know. The info from British Archive Records really puts an interesting question of view. The British took the position that the future of the maritime patrol aircraft was the jet, and viewed the US Navy's P-3 Orion as nothing more than a stopgap until they conver converted a Boeing 707 or similar aircraft into a maritime patrol aircraft. And that was the idea that they were paid for, they were suggested of, and that's what they were believed. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Rapid Ray's work. Thank you, I have members going up. That's good. Um, I'm just going to actually give a note on that, because I received a friendly email from someone the other today, uh, today actually, who is far more advanced in the YouTube analytics than I am. And apparently... Um, the two key metrics which YouTube is now using for judging a channel's worth and whether or not they should promote it in their logarithms are channel memberships and premium views. So people who are premium viewers watching the channel, watching a video. Those all matter. So how come the British got it so wrong when the USN would go to a jet, a jet MPAs? Because the USN got it wrong. Because the USN thought they'd do it earlier than they did as well. Going on, how does the county not have an axe bow? Because at the time the axe bow wasn't considered the thing they were going for. Um, they're going for a sort of a British World War One era version of an of Atlantic bow. But it does actually have a specific name for it. How old is your fluffy research assistant? The poodle is roughly... Hang on now. You're nearly two, and he must be nearly five. He must be. Or is he four? God, I get your ages wrong, because to me, you're just always my little pups, aren't you? As far as I'm concerned, you're never more than six months old. Thank you, Leslie. Um... He is a that's for sure. He is a big fluffy dorkable doggo. Yes he is. 
Michael Wolf, it's a, it's a modern question, but what do you think about the revival of the SV-22 or similar aircraft? I think it could help with the S3 gap, especially with the modern threats. I do think you do need an S3, you need something to take on the role of the Viking. You need that long-range anti-submarine capability. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to do for it, but they need something. Again, they got rid of those aircraft believing that there was going to be something coming over the horizon which replaced them. And especially the intruder, the the bomb truck that would that replaced it would replace the intruder, and they haven't got those, and now they need to develop those, and they will probably be drones. But yeah, Colin Cameron, what about members who that also have premium? That's a whole other ball game for YouTube. Basically, YouTube has to work out how to pay its bills, and it's starting to pay its bills. But it for that subscribers, the chats, all these things matter. So channels which get more of those things get more promotions. It's what they like. And this is the point I often make to some of my colleagues. And this is, I, I do love this perspective in academia, which does sometimes view these sort of things as terribly di as dirty things to talk about. But, you know, it's worthwhile remembering. All this stuff needs money to work and that's fine money is only a bad thing if you a treat it as such and b if you are pursuing its acquisition above all else um, for me acquisition of money is usually about how to spend on books occasionally fluffy research assistance and th those sort of things for YouTube, well, again, it's profit, but also it employs a lot of people, and it makes a lot of these things doable. Um, one of the things I've been told recently is sort of you've got to prepare for a future where YouTube doesn't exist. You know, what happens? What's the next evolution going to be? What's the next thing which are going to have these videos, etc.? And I said, I don't know. But I will keep looking out, and I will keep an eye to the ground, and I will have a look at these systems. And at some point, I will probably have to think about that. But I want to keep this sort of thing up, because I like this kind of public-facing history. I like doing these discussions. I like having these conversations, because I think it makes the history more approachable. And I think anything which makes the history more approachable, and able to be accessed by more people, is better. Nineteen six hundred. So the U.S. N. planned to get a jet in the nineties. Yes, but then the Cold War ended. Asher, so you're saying that I, as a premium viewer, should just have your videos on the background as well? So. Both I and Drac know the value of the fact that premium viewers like if premium viewers like your channels, it helps out a lot. It makes YouTube very, very happy. Jack Ray, I thought, I thought membership had affected the analytics. Thanks for the confirmation. It does. <laughs> Ron, the long range treat detector dishes dishes are zeroed in on the chat. You can guarantee they are. <laughs> Any time everyone says, please give ch uh, give something to the uh, the fluff. The fluff is very very happy to be gifted it. A second pa George W. Second power outage in the air today. Oh blimey. Hello, Alzul. <laughs> uh, like, if Doug Sea was a villain, then the adorable Corgi would have been a white cat. Halloween costume idea? Tempted, but if I paint him white, I think I would get probably crucified by my family members. Thank you, Jack Ray. There appears to be a, a, a glut of some very nice memberships gifted, if people want them. Um... Mikey Newman, I became premium member to ditch the adverts. I would, I, I wouldn't go back. I'm a premium member as well now. I have to say, I decided because I was earning enough money from YouTube that it made sense to be a premium member. But also, it allowed me to ditch the adverts. And then, when I realised that it meant the people I watch get more money 
because of being a premium member watching it than almost they get from adverts. You almost get more money as a pre from premium views than you do from adverts. It's um, I just basically went, yeah, fine, I'm doing that. I'm helping out the people I want to I watch. So, well, Cameron, Diok, have you checked out your power letter to so you know which days you have a power cut if they go go ahead this winter? Um, not yet, but when I do get back and I do realise I'm going to sort of have to sort it out, I might have to either get some sort of um, power supply system that sort of allows me to continue to power. Uh, we actually had been talking about, because you know Drac has got the um, solar panels and the battery, and we've been talking about that as a family for all ages. But it's basically, it's working out what we're going to do to get there, and it's where we're going to get that, because both me and Karen, are, me and my sister, are, um, are trying to sort of work out where we're going to be in the next few years and what we're going to do, and sort these things out. And you need to have almost a future plan before you do that sort of kind of big expense. You need to work out what you're going to be doing and where you're going to be doing it. Hmm. Not a wolf. Rain strike. You need and now need to protect across multiple axes. Yep. Admiral Jellico. Hello, Jellico. Is Type 26 and 31 worth it despite the military cuts? Yes. They are very much worth it. <laughs> you need them. Uh, you need those to replace the Type 23s. They're going to be. They've got a guard or so soon. And you need the Type 31s as well because you need them for their roles for their forward presence and the ease to be forward present. But it's got. It's. It's going to be a, 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 a thing to make it. There have been no cuts announced yet. I don't expect there to be cuts cuts. There had been announced a massive incre uh, increase in defence spending, which was going to fund more than just those that were already announced things. I wouldn't be surprised if the increase is cut. They should still be able to afford what they were planning on getting. Chumak, YouTube premium, uh, premium is great value for creators as it's much more lucrative than an ad-supported view. Yes, but also YouTube premium is important because, how do I put it, it's judged on by how long a viewer watches your videos, not how many ads. So it may encourages you to try and make your videos more engaging. And I do know my videos tend to have a drop-off point at about the 30-minute mark on the longer ones. And I find that interesting, and I've been working on trying to make them better so they don't have that 30 minute drop-off point. Hello, C. McDivitt. I think possibly it's just because of the length. That's true, I tend to binge watch your videos. I let, uh, I let a backlog of videos build up and then I binge them. Cool. Andy, supporting is like a hobby, as it's an interest for me, and learning from you is a privilege. Thanks. Oh, it's a pleasure. I, li I like teaching. It's one of the reasons why I do what I do. I, I don't like paperwork, which is why I went to university level. <laughs> I do teach school children, age ones. I, I teach with a company called Justin Craig, who are a lovely revision company, and I have done work in schools. And the amount of paperwork for working in a school versus working in a university, it's very different. Plus, there's the advantage that when you take them on a field trip, university students are considered self-propelled beings, in other words, you are not in. You are not responsible for everything they do. Whereas, although I have had to get them out of rigging, we'll leave that to one side. Um, but um, yeah, they are. They are fun. It's school ones you have to be more conscious of. Rapper Razak, the clock, and then the Cold War ended, and all, we all wanted to believe it ended. It's like the conservation of mass energy; it never ends; it just changes form. Oh yeah. Mikey Newman, I watch you and Drac, but what other Naval History channels are worth for you? Oh, well, I've got to recommend Jamie Seidel. I've got to recommend Armored Carriers, because that's the third one of us from Bilge Pumps. And he is lovely. Nice to uh, Question, is what would the USN choose, the Boeing 757 or the McDonnell Douglas uh, MD-94 based MPA with um, probably the Boeing one? It's going to be the the USN learnt from the British of buying the Comet. You do not buy something which is a bespoke model 
you buy something which is a uh, something which is in production with oodles and oodles of people and you're going to have oodles and oodles of spare parts Not a wolf. It's good to hear my premium actually helps creators. I was always thinking it was hurting because I wasn't watching ads. No, it actually helps us more. It's that that's the thing. But I actually I always say I don't mind. It's uh, I, I am. Hello, you. What are you planning on doing? If I let you down, are you going to behave yourself? Okay, you're down on the floor. If you do get up to any trouble or eat anything you're not supposed to, your mummy will kill me. It's a case of with the YouTube premium uh, versus the ads. The ad income can be astronomical if lots of people watch your videos. But the premium can be more consistent. So it's kind of like a case of, oh, well, I have these premium people regularly watch my shows. That almost gives you a baseline of income coming in. Night no, Secret, is the YouTube channel membership something you have to pay for? Um, the channel membership is does cost some money. Yes, I think I, I think I've set it as lowest it can be set at. I haven't set any higher variants or anything like that. I haven't set a tier system in place. Just a regular, just a beta thing. And it basically because I'm there are some who have gone entirely to the YouTube membership scheme rather than Patreon. And I've got Patreon as well, of course. And so I thought, well, I'm not going to set up to sort of two conflict with each other. It's just some people prefer YouTube membership over Patreon. And now they've made YouTube membership advantageous for other reasons, I said. You really wanted to be on that rug, didn't you? Mm-hmm. That was naughty, wasn't it? Ah, Mike and Newman, we can't make the roll living small. It's all it's tiny already. True. Very true. Brother, Dr. Clark, have you read Brothers in Arm by James Holland? Uh oh, bits of it. I haven't read the whole thing yet. Rufon, I love how I seem to be one of the few members of my peer group that likes sixty plus minute videos. Yeah. 60 plus minute videos are good. Seriously, I was chatting away with um, a creator who definitely doesn't do history videos. They do something else. And their view is that um, anything less than 90 minutes doesn't make them any money. And I went, well, you, uh, yeah, my videos on average are usually about 75 minutes long. And I went, yeah, you're probably making money. I went, mm, yeah, I'm, I'm supporting myself, but nowhere near what you're doing. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy. And that's the thing. I'm happy. It's it's a case of for me, the growth is more about reaching more people at this rate. It's a case of the growth in income. It's useful because it allows me to do more history, and all the money does go back into this sort of stuff. But um, yeah, it's more it's more the number of people it reaches that I sort of really wonder about, and I like. Come on, Cameron, Doc. Uh, I went to with a couple of high-powered um, UPS. Uh, they're under interrupted power systems. They are attached to the computer in normal circumstances, but I can take them to my mum to run her medical when if it needs, has needs to be swapped out. Very good of you. Dear Doc, I like to have yours and Rack's videos playing in the background while they're working. Um, that's nice of you. Um, history idiot. What uni would you choose to study history in the UK? Who? Okay, I'm biased because of King's College London. That's where I do my PhD. St. Mary's is also good. I also know Exeter and Plymouth universities are excellent. Portsmouth has a great naval history program as well. Um, I've Durham is very good. So is Manchester. Cambridge is my preference over Oxford, but both are good. But King's is my favourite of that sort of tier. Um... Aberystwyth and St. Andrews both have fine programs, but honestly, Glasgow beats that for me. 
I've wandered around all uh, quite a lot of unis in my time. If I was choosing Gendo, my personal choice, I ended up doing my bachelor's at St. Mary's in Twickenham, and I did my PhD at King's. I did my master's, my MSc, because I was told I had to have a master's in, to do war studies, you have to have both a history qualification and an internet, and a international relations qualification, really, at the time when I went through. So I went and did my MSc in international conflict at Kingston, which is a course which no longer runs, which I chose because I was told, you can do whichever, wherever you want to go, and I went, I'll do Kingston, because that's the same uni my sister works at. And little did I know, I'd start teaching history of engineering while I was there, and still be working at it many, many years later. I mean, I did that when I was 21, 22. I did that, and I'm still teaching there, teaching history of engineering and academic skills and all these things about, ooh, 13 years later. I've outlasted three heads of the department. Right, fun. I had a co-worker who thought I was nuts for like, uh, liking Drax right, of Adrian Drydox. They're cool. They have a lot of questions answered. Amr Jalico, how would one study modern Navy ships and warfare, finally moving on from the Cold War? King's College of London's War Studies Department. There is a War Studies Department at Birmingham and other universities, but King's, at War, King's is the best. Um, Birmingham is very good. And I do know the people who run Birmingham. I have a great deal of respect for them, but King's is the best. Birmingham is very good if you are closer to Birmingham and that's where you want to go to. But King's also does an online course and that makes it even more interesting. Jack Ray, I like the what is going on with Shipping Channel, though it has less history. Yes, that's Sal's channel and that is excellent. Sal Marquiago. And he's, of course, basically an honorary bilge pumper. He comes on so often. I was asking, I have a quasi-YouTube premium in my browser. It's called Adblock. Just add channels I want to support, like Doc, to exclusion list. Thank you. The Afra is uh, really long in the body. Yes, he's a corgi. So, the Boeing 757-200 would be the P8A Poseidon had things gone to plan. Pretty much, I'm thinking a 757 would have been a good point for him to go for. Don't worry about YouTube. Look, it's a case of the comments about YouTube Premium are basically informing you about it, but it's a case of it's do what you can afford. I do the YouTube Premium, as said, because it makes sense for me because I spend enough of my life both listening to YouTube and watching YouTube, and I also have the money coming in from YouTube, so it's kind of a case of, yeah, I must well be a Premium member. It balances out. I find it funny you want to redo your Battle Cruiser video. It's the most watched video on the channel. Yes, it is. The Battle Cruiser video is the most watched video on the channel. It is massively watched. And I want to redo it because I want to make it better. Because the thing is, there's the level I could do it then. And I think I could do it better now. Matt Hamilton, do you get made the head of development of the UK's anti submarine warfare requirement at least in Nimrod? It's the very beginning project. What do you differently with airframe? Do you, which airframe do you choose? I choose a Boeing airframe. That's the thing. I'd either have to choose a Boeing or an Airbus airframe. Um, I wouldn't choose the Nimrod Comet. Um, I have to choose a more uh, an airframe which is more in use in service and more sensibly in service. I have to choose. I, uh, that's the first thing. I know. I know. I'm supposed to go with a British plane, but I would go with British. I would get a manufacturer license and I would build it in Britain. But I wouldn't necessarily go with the British designed aircraft. That would get make me that would lose me a lot of political points. Hey! Hey. No. That was my hand. Alright. He got distracted by my hand in the dark and he decided that it was patting him. He didn't think it was patting him. Is he nervy, do you think? I think he's very nervy tonight. Mum takes the thunder around. I don't think there's thunder, but I do think there's strange noises. Come on, Bob. You okay, little bloke? I know, I know, I know. You'd never like it. This is why you do not, if you're patting a dog absentmindedly, always be careful because they might be happily wandering along and you think, just reach down and pat, and they go, hey, where's the hand come from? 
Anyway, it's the hand is attached to the same two legs which you're sniffing around, so you think you'd realise it's my hand, but no. I, was, I found that long patrols, uh, one and a quarter speed, is the perfect speed for the dog. I'm glad so. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I forgot it was Sunday. Don't worry. Not off. Jack Wright, can come on. It had me do a little bit ago. I tapped on it and there was a slider. Just press that and then the X and you'll be good. Hmm. What I've heard as typical figure is 100,000 subscribers on YouTube is the point at which you'll provide a full-time income. That is pretty much what I would agree, but I would also say for an academics version of what a full-time, of a part-time income is, I would say probably, about, uh, judging by the figures which I've discussed with Drac, where I'm, with usually a circumspect discussion, as we're British people discussing figures, I would reckon, basically at the point of 20,000 subscribers, I would probably be matching one of my jobs, which pays me for two days a week. Jack Wright, I write code while listening to your videos. Other channels as well. Long videos are be work best for that. I can agree with that, because I tend to write while listening to things as well. <laughs> Not Wolf, I go through yours and Jack's videos while I'm working, or in even in the gym. Cool. Mr. Edith, hello. Due to various things like autism, such as I will be starting at 22, stalls right to go to, t to uni. Hmm. Well, don't worry. That will work. <laughs> Look, you start uh, you start when you start. In the nicest way, I tend to like mature students. Because in my experience, they tend to focus on the work and not do so much mucking around. Um, there are always some students that seem to think, <laughs> think that university is all about the party. And yes, it is a good chance to become a well-rounded person. A code for actually develop your social skills. But that's not the purpose you're at the university for. You're at the university to read and learn for your degree. The rest is the bonus. And it's as long as you treat it as a bonus, that's fine. Ooh, here comes the wind. Or the hot tub. I think someone over there might be in their hot tub. I am now annoyed that I'm in the only one with that hot tub in the entire room. <laughs> oh, it's better for your viewing pleasure, but it's less fun for me. <laughs> um. <laughs> Dr. Clark and Drac are the only videos I have to lay in provisions in for before I watch. I'm glad you'd lay in provisions. Almost through the Iron Bro. As a heads up, I said, around about 9 o'clock is when I'll finish this evening's one. Um. <laughs> I'm glad I'm more restful than watching a Cubase and Synthesizer tutorial. Did it ever exist then? Yes and no. There is certainly an idea of working towards what Airbus will be, but it's not quite there yet. Did Dog Bite? No. He just snapped. Andy, Andy, I'll be applying to Ports of Uni next year, following my um, PM with you on discussion at the squad a while ago, a new career move. Yeah, you will find Portsmouth is a brilliant naval history program. Um, I tend to recommend them for people, especially for mature students who are looking for a place to go which will build you up. They are really nice people. Corgi got scared. Yes, Corgi got scared. That's the thing. It was in the dark. And my hand came down to pat him, as you do, and he went, oh. Nice to go, friend. Um, if the Boeing 757-P8 Poseidon was available, would you take the retiring British Airways Boeing 757-200 for MPA conversions for the RAF Nimrod replacement? Potentially. Would it be sensible to? Jack Ray, not all dogs are as intellectually gifted as Poodle. N 
I would say this. I love both my dogs equally. But I would say the Corgi's the better guard dog, but the Corgi is also a lot more nervous than the Poodle. But there again, he'll probably get better as he gets older. And he's now going for a walk around, and he's fine. He's, I know my sister's safe when she walks around with the Corgi. I am not turning the camera around to look at him over there. <laughs> the start of, there may be other people in that direction. <laughs> the camera might see them, and it, I'm not doing that. But no, he is now wandering around quite happily. As you can see, if you look... Can you see him? Can you see a white fluffy thing? I'm not sure if they can see a white fluffy thing. Uh, no. It's too dark. Good lord, there is a there is a fluffy thing. Let me move the camera a bit. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Hello. No, I don't think you can see me. No, you can't. The white fluff is hiding. It's amazing how much the white fluff does hide. But no, he's behaving himself. He's happy. He's a good boy. There is a fox or badger about. There are lots of things about. Ah. But guys, you know, do you think the USN made a mistake by going with the Super Hornet instead of Super Tomcat? They went with the financially most sensible decision. But do I think it was the operationally most sensible decision? I am not sure. I think it could have had an impact on the F-35 and other designs because I think the Super Tomcat could have carried more bombs and would have been more interesting. But it would have been a lot more expensive to run. And that's going to have an impact on your operating statistics. So you might not have managed to get the size of air groups that they managed to maintain through those years. And that's the thing. Sometimes its volume matters as much as the individual aircraft capabilities. And if you can keep more Super Hornets going than Super Tomcats, then it's Super Hornets you go with. Mikey Newman. I was thinking today while looking on the old Tornado F3, why didn't we didn't buy F-15s, F-16s and build them under license? Do we keep some uh, homegrown industry? Same with AW aircraft. Would have been interesting. I have to say, again, going back to the Super Tomcat scenario, um... What I'd have liked to have seen, and I think would have been more sensible, is if they kept it to a, pro a, possible, a, a system of one squadron, a squadron of Super Tomcats per carrier, and the rest being Super Hornet. I think it would be more sensible to go on for a mixed buy, rather than the one or the other scenario. I think they set themselves up with a problem. Why does the wind sound like a distant turboprop engine? I'm not sure, but it is windy. I don't know, going back to selling Eagle and getting thus getting a second Ark Royal question, has there ever been an incident of obsolete ship conventionally sinking and thus just justifying a modern replacement? Um, there have been some very interesting sinkings in the past. But in the interwar treaty era, there was actually surprisingly few convenient sinkings. It would have been so useful if some had sunk. It's true. Thank you. Think you of Plymouth or Portsmouth or Kings? Well, as I said, it goes go with the one you like. Um, I would say it always depends on how much you, what your special needs support is. Okay, I always we classify as special needs, but I always call it as educational learning differences. Okay, we all have different learning styles, and some have some styles are more pronounced than others. In which case, I would suggest going and looking at all three and working out which one suits you best and your learning style best. Because the reality is, if you call it learning differences, everyone learns differently, everyone has their own techniques. Me, I tend to revise and read and learn with television and other things on in the background, and other people find that absolutely impossible, but for me, that makes sense. That's how I fit around my dys uh, work with my dyslexia and work with my own little peccadilloes of learning, and it works. 
I think he's now upset that he's not out here with me. This is the thing. He did that completely because I reached out and I said, on me. And now he's upset he's not out here with me. George Newman, always go slow and let the dog sniff a hand. Well, that's the thing. I thought I was going down for the end near the nose so he could sniff my hand. But it turned out I was further down the body than I thought I was. So, yeah, that's on me. Ah, Christopher. Ah, Christopher. One of my dogs is mostly deaf and was a bit high strung even before her hearing issues. So one must take care not to accidentally sneak up on her. Yeah, I can understand that one. Honestly, I'm not sure, I was honestly expecting to call him dumb. No, he's not dumb. He's very smart. He's just highly strung. He's just. I'm not going to say even highly strung, I'd just say nervous. Hey, hey, hey. Hello. Oh, hello. Have you been sent out to keep me company? Ah. Uh, You've been dispatched out to keep me company. Have you decided you want lap time? You've just come out here to wag. Okay. Oh, hello. Oh, oh good lord. Seriously. It was black enough. Wasn't it black enough out here? Oh, yeah. I know. You, you are sure you're a lap dog? You are positive you're a lap dog? The rest of us might not be so positive. But you're sure you're a lap dog? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> oh, hello. Yeah, you, you've now got a black face staring at you going, hello. If he opens his jaws, then you'll be able to see him quite clearly. <laughs> just, getting, just getting partially squashed. You see dark in a glass of iron brew. Hello. This is on the stream. <laughs> in Dorset. Also deer. There are deer around as well, yes. He, this one likes the deer. He thinks they're, he thinks they're basically friends. Um, Wayne's World of Science. From, sorry, what was the top dog? What was the website you got the doggy t-shirts from? Um, Doggyvengers.com was where we found them. That's what we searched on Google. I think they're still going. Daniel Human, we see for Tom Hacks. Wasn't there an issue that the Tomcat was long since out of production to uh, so hard to get spare parts, etc.? They would have had to restart the production line, yes. But basically, you have to remember a Super Tomcat like a Super Hornet is a Tomcat or a Hornet in a only name. Could you turn that light back on? At all? The light on? For me? Out here? <laughs> oh, I do love them. What is the current number of percentage of hornets on the bark on the limit CV? They're supposed to keep, I think it's roughly six for each carrier. It's supposed to. Um, when would it have been useful CVs to have sunk and why? Um, some CVs sinking in, 19, in 1932, 1933 would have been really useful for the Royal Navy. The, the Tomcat in general had a lot of maintenance issues. It was a shh, no. They are allowed to go. They are happy. They are happy. They are being happy. Right. Ugh. Doggos do have a hard life. They do. Hey, you. Hey. No. 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 I don't need protection. Our neighbours are fine. Hey. Hey. Calm down. Calm down. Super Tomcat versus Super Hornet. I guess the newer Amram once also got close range now. Aim 54 Phoenix. Hey, it was better with lighter and agile stuff. Eh, they're all good. They have different advantages. And Rochego, why doesn't the Royal Navy have a dedicated airborne early warning radar instead of relying on helicopters that don't have long range? 
Um, honestly, because it's getting an aircraft which will operate off our style of carriers, and the helicopters don't, they have enough range. They manage to keep that, you'll think uh, the aircraft doesn't allow you to move forward, so hence it's called an airborne early warning rather than an AWACS, rather than an airborne sort of warning and control, so they don't go with the strikes, but it does provide the AEW, which is what you want it for, from a defence perspective. So it's fine for what the Royal Navy needs it to do. Rapper is it? We're sending out three legged out as a pirate for but, uh, Halloween. Mrs. Raysback made her a, a, a peg leg. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. You, you, you might not realize this, but my hand is currently on the poodle's head. I'm not sure if it's showing through in the screen, in the screen but yeah, the poodle is staring at the screen. That, you can see a glint off the eye occasionally. <laughs> yeah, hello, hello, John Shea. Hello, everyone. See, no, that isn't the worst dog I've seen. And my brother lets his blue healer sit in his lap. <laughs> oh, fun times. I know someone who has a Saint Bernard who likes to believe it's a lap dog. So, yeah. History, don't McDermott. History edit. Yeah. I uh, thanks for the advice. I will uh, uh, definitely go and look around them, possibly a couple of times in over two years. Or so, that sounds very sensible. And. Yeah, um, there are some nice people. Get in contact with them on Twitter and see if someone nice will show you around, because there's a fair number of them who will do. Hmm. Son of Herka, Dr. C, you have now been joined by Fissle, the ne nearly as large as the Corgi Orange Cat. Cool, hello Fissle. Hmm, uh, come on, guys. Re aim 54 versus aim 120. And the former was not really developed like the aim 7 spiral line to Amram. No, USN tinkers with F 18E carrying SM 6 Sam as an AWACS killer, I guess. Oof. Not a wolf, yeah. The aim 120 can barely outrange the aim 54 A's and B's and just 13 miles off the 54 C. But guy to 8829 have read the US was um, debating selling or stationing B21 Raiders to Australia. Would the RAF buy some if the US offered to sell them? Probably, but I doubt the uh, the US will. I think they'll probably just base some abroad. And mainly that's the Royal or uh, that's mainly that some um, some Australian think tanks which like to talk about buying such things that are making that noise, not actually anyone really in America or the American government, or the Australian government. Um, Raffaello. Ooh, Dr. Clark, some aircraft have become ships of um, Theseus, it seems. It may look like a Hornet, but it's really a Hornet? Yeah, no, that's definitely not the case. Um, unless you really have a few CVs sunk in 3044, do you think Parliament would have approved funding to build replacements? Yes. Peace on our time, right? Who needs the new CVs? No, they were committed to keeping... And remember, this is the same parliament which is paying to keep up all the defence spending, etc. They might be talking about peace in their time, but it's peace in their time which is buying time for them to rapidly rearm. Hello? I'm trying to talk to the screen. Hello? Oh, let's put your hand in pause there. I can actually reach the screen. Hello? Um... Mm. Alexander, I think you're mista uh, mistaking things. The Super to uh, Tomcat was an F-14B fitted with a General Electric engine instead of a part of uh, Pratt & Whitney TF-30. The future concept was called Tomcat 21. Um, the... Not quite, okay. There is the designs which are put in versus the... Um, with the, uh, that compete with the Super Hornet which is also called a Super Tomcat, but I do understand what you're talking about, uh, why you're talking about the later version. There is an earlier Super Tomcat, which is an ev evolution of the B, and then there is a Super Tomcat, which goes up against, or Tomcat 21, sometimes we will refer to it as, which goes up against the Super Hornet. And that looks like a Tomcat on the outside, but has completely new avionics, electronics, everything inside, 
new engines, it's pretty much a new aircraft. It just has some shaping similarities. Very fun, hello. Is the semi-occasional habit of de designing a vehicle around a weapon, e.g. the A-10, a post-war invention or is there a historical precedent? Dido class cruisers and the 5.25. Night Heron Princess, any thoughts on the France, on the France new aircraft carriers? Look, news. Looks like a slightly smaller Nimitz. It looks like an evolution of a Queen Elizabeth class. It's basically, it's a halfway in between. That'd be an interesting vessel. What would be more interesting is if they built more than one of them. I don't know, Tomcats were 1960s era aircraft design intended for the three level maintenance, not the two levels modern military current uses. Same issues that saw the F Treble 1 near retire early after the wall fell down. Hmm. I'm not surprised uh, Boeing would have won the P3 replacement maritime patrol air contest as McDonnell Douglas were in the process of going belly up. Yep. Yeah. Wolf, Dr. C, any universities in the US you would recommend for modern naval study? Ooh. Surprisingly, University of Texas is pretty darn good at modern naval history. Don't ask me why, but I've chatted with a fair number of their um, lecturers over the years, and they all seem pretty darn good at it. Mudgate is known. The Super Tomcat was supposed to get new avionics, but thrusting vectors and more fuel besides new engines, along with losing some equipment that was used to support the Phoenix missile. Yeah, that was because also there was supposed to be a new aim fund 54 for it. Good boy. 96, everyone. So, in the 1990s, the USN chose the level uh, Lockheed P7 over the 757 and the MD-90. If the Nimrod MR4 had come online, does that look outdated in comparison to Nimrod? Uh... <laughs> mm, it certainly doesn't look great. Hmm. Anuk, three levels flight line maintenance, intermediate stop maintenance, and depot maintenance. Two levels flight line and depot. Start adopted in the 1990s. Hmm. I had two. There were several advanced Tomcat proposals made by Grumman. It started at minor updates for the F-14D, then a rebuilding of airframes that ended with the completely new advanced Super Tomcat Tone 21. Hmm. Isra, thank you for your advice. I'm hoping to do my Masters and PhD in Maritime History or something like that. Uh, Port, go have a look. Depending on where you live, go have a look at Portsmouth and Kings, but Portsmouth, if you're focusing purely on Maritime History, Portsmouth and Plymouth, actually, no, at Plymouth, there is a guy you want to talk to um, called Harry Bennett, who was one of my PhD examiners and is really, really nice. And I think he is... He's got some PhD students due to be done in a couple... in about three, year, three four years' time, because he's got something just started, so that would be about fit with your timeline, roughly. Um... Professor, any good new best-selling history worth a look? I've not got new books sent to me yet. We'll see. All right. Uh, we'll do another roughly ten minutes. So I'll be 9.30 when we finish. I don't want to be out here too late because I'm not going to disturb everyone else's evening. But I didn't want to let you all down. And thank you, for, as ever, for all your support. It really does make a difference. You behave yourself? Yeah. You're a good boy. Um, let's see. USN stopped the P7A program, citing Lockheed's inability to make adequate progress towards completion of all the contract phases. Yeah, I think the US Navy may be annoyed they are stuck with the Iran. Mm. They're having trouble with it. I live in southeast England. Portsmouth, probably. Portsmouth. Old Kings are probably the easiest ones. 
depending on where you live in southeast England. Anuk, flight line maintenance, replace, remove, replace box, and send to a depot for repair. Works fine as long as logistics pipeline isn't interrupted, and there are enough parts in the system. True. Thank you, Jack Ray. Not all. Wow, I was not expecting University of Texas. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, the Uni of Texas is a lovely place. They're one of the ones I would love to go and guest lecture at because they seem to have such a friendly department. Bedroom, we have the Empire State Maritime College in New York City for the Mar Merchant Marine. wonder if they have a maritime history program. I'm not sure. I know whichever program Sal Merculatus teaches at is good. So, but I'm never quite sure which one he teaches at. I'm Joko. If the IRS... Because every time he's talked to me he about it, and it sounds terrible, I, I should probably check it out. He's used the initials, and I just go, Yes, Sal, that sounds great. And I'm just mentally getting my head going, which uni is that? I have no idea. I don't know what the initials stand for. Thank you for streaming device. Look forward to the next time to build for the podcast. They will be out soon. Paul Westbrook, don't see. Well, sorry if someone already asked. When, where has Build Trumps 108 gone to? Uh, it's sitting in the folder ready to be uploaded, as is a Build Trumps 109. They'll both be uploaded. It's just it's taken a time to get them out because we've all been moving around. So we recorded them, and then it took time for them to reach me, and then I was preparing to come away on this, and it's basically a case of it's just not gone up. It's been done, it's just not been uploaded because I just... It just skipped off the list of jobs somehow. But it's actually with me, so I'll probably upload it and get it going live on Wednesday. Alex, the initials stand for words. They do, but I just don't know what words they stand for. Um, just long, if you care for a sci-fi question, what would Admiral Jellico think of Captain Jellico from uh, The Next Generation, and of which sci-fi captain for which historic battle? battle? Um, oh, good lord. Jellico would not be a fan of Captain Jellico. He would probably think him a bit of a twit. And... Um, which sci-fi captain for which historic battle? Um, considering how much of a Hail Mary it was, I think I'd want Dylan Hunt for um, Trafalgar. I don't think he's quite as good as Nelson, but I think he'd be interesting for it. Leslie Mitchell, thank you for all you do. Don't worry about it, but enjoy those. Enjoy the, your Robin Hooded pair of Takayas. They are coming. Beltrans 107 is the last one that's up. Rafa Rosa, Dr. Clark, how many armored carriers, Essex carriers, would it take to match a Queen Elizabeth Nimitz or Ford and capability? Oh. Uh, the trouble is the F-35s could pretty much sink, one shot sink most of those ships because they have no defense that can work against the missiles. So basically you you would be, could carry, you, you need almost to have enough of those ships that they would run out of missiles before you ran out of ships. And then you could probably win it. Alternatively, it depends, are you talking with air groups? Because if there's no air groups then probably a, an armoured carrier would win the fight with any of them. They would. <laughs> they have 400 inch guns and armour. <laughs> it would not be nice. I know the Nimitz would go, well, we have missiles, but in this case of, yeah. But how much damage are those missiles going to do to our armour? Not a wolf. Good. I'm looking at a, a Navy Intel as a potential career, and it needs to be a good school with great potential. My vision disability. USN and the Texas one, the University of Texas, is very good. 
I think were well, the USN jealous that the UK had the jet Nimrod, whereas they had to run. Uh, they felt the Nimrod was a very good specialist aircraft, is their exact phraseology they used. Good boy. Um, mission, Admiral Jellicoe, Captain Jellicoe at Jutland. Admiral Jellicoe, every time. Captain Jellicoe is someone from Stargate Next Generation who was really bad. Well, let's put it this way, he was not Picard, and he was set up to be an obvious, very much not Picard. Hmm. You would sit here forever, as long as you're being patted, wouldn't you? You have no concept of anything other than I'm being patted, life is good. I don't know, is it me or just this part of chat, or is the chat bug? It just seems the email message to remind me of a smiley in it. Test, test. The smiley seems to get through. Have, have your messages just not been getting through IO2? Did you just say Star Trek? And get Stargate Next Generation? No, I said Star Trek Next Generation. I'm sure I said Star Trek Next Generation. <laughs> Star Trek Next Generation. I'm sure I said stop. You were all winding me up. Need more iron brew. Yeah, you could defend me from these people winding me up. No? You're just gonna sit there and be patted and just go, that's my purpose in life, just to be patted. Okay. Mm. Oh, I don't know. Ryan. Mm hmm. Many seconds. Nope, not winding up. I heard it. Well, okay. Then there's something wrong with the mic, or I haven't had enough iron brew. <laughs> we would never wind you up, or maybe you would. I, I, that's, that's the thing. I'm fairly certain you would wind me up. Um. Now, Karen, if the 757 wins the ma Maritime Patrol aircraft, wouldn't that mean it could become the basis for the 7A Wernstel? Yes. Or an AWACS, maybe even earlier. Um, but John, many Trekkers, like Captain Jekko, had a rough start, I think. Like Captain Jekko, had a rough start, but most of the crew adjusted and worked well, especially Data. Riker had a big issue and sulked in the cabin. Hmm, yeah, but... It's... Always worrying when an officer comes in, presuming a temporary post is going to become permanent, and presuming that. Let's put it this way. I could see why someone will want to stay as XO on the Enterprise because you're going to be far more important in the Federation than as captain of a minor ship. And that's the thing: is the longer you stay as XO on the Enterprise, the more likely you are to go straight to a big ship. And that is what Riker does. Riker goes to Titan, which allows him to be a very important captain straight away. Whereas if he'd gone to a Stargazer equivalent ship, he wouldn't have been as useful. Or as up there in importance or fame. And Riker needed a certain level of fame to motivate him. himself. He has an ego. Funny. G W twenty six question nine hundred dollars okay. Um, you get eight of those in exchange for the tigers and the counties. What are the likely out name uh, ship names? Just reuse the county names, more than likely. That's the world we are in. <laughs> I 
And it's not just any galaxy, it's the flagship of the Federation. It's status personified. Ryan. Oh. oh. Hey. Yes. Ryan, someone is reminding me it's now 9.30. So I'm going to say thank you very much, everyone. I'm going to say, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a nice time. And thank you for watching. Thank you for all your support as ever. What are you up to? You see, I think someone is saying you all haven't looked at him enough. So he wants to say goodbye. And let's see if this works. Hello? Well, he, you just got as close to a kiss goodbye from a poodle as you can get. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you had a nice evening. I will say, of course, back and goodbye to you all personally, as I always try to do. Um, right. Take care, my music for me. Take care, History Edit. Thank you, DG40. Thank you, Carl Kasberg. Thank you, Leslie Mitchell. Thank you, Bitron. Thank you, Melanie, Jack Ray, Dan Freeman, Sean Mack, and Stafford for your admining this evening. Bitron. I like the fact that in TNG you see uh, Riker doing XO work with personal and managing the ship's daily routines. That's, yeah, that's what an XO is supposed to be there for. Take care, Joss Funk. Thank you, Night 681. Thank you, Jim B. Thank you, Anuk. Alzaski, thank you. Bugguy 839, thank you. Not a wolf. Take care. And I too, thank you. Paul Beswick, thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Right then. Thank you, Jameth, Tanaverka, Rufon. Thank you. Thank you for all the questions. And have fun. Thank you all, and see you next week. To specifically, next Sunday. Thank you, Yikers. Good boy. Take care, everyone.